the Committee on Labor Employment and Human Resources Development is called to order. Our agenda for today is a proposed Senate Resolution No. 692, followed by Senator Rafi Tulfo, last July 20th, 2023. In pursuit of achieving the intention of the measure to address the concerns and challenges surrounding the enforcement of judicial decisions in labor dispute, the committee invited resource persons from concerned government agencies and various private organizations. With us today are the following members of the committee, Senator Chis Scudero and uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo. With the presence of our colleagues, we declare the presence of a quorum. Of, of a quorum. At this point, our committee secretaries directed to read into the records as uh, the title of the resolution or agenda and to acknowledge the resource persons present. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Senator Scudero. Our agenda for today. Senator Tulfo is also here. And the Vice Chair, Senator Tulfo. The, the agenda for today is uh, proposed Senate Resolution Number 692. Timely enforcement of judicial decisions in labor disputes introduced by the Vice Chair, Senator Tulfo. Invited and who are physically present in today's inquiry are the following. From the Department of Labor and Employment Central Office, Attorney Florence Bual from the Legal Service, together with Attorney Rea Santiago, Attorney Maurice Lim, and Attorney Marlon Alban. From the National Conciliation and Mediation Board, Deputy Executive Director Teresita Odea, together with Attorney Kim Marie Aquino, OIC Director for Technical Services. From the National Labor Relations Commission, we have the Chairperson of the Commission, Chairperson Grace Manikistan, together with the pres Presiding Commissioner Joseph Gerard Mabilog, Commissioner Mary Ann Plata de Itia, Commissioner Leonard Vince Ignacio, Commissioner Hernan Nicdao, Commissioner Donna Ramos, Commissioner Charmalu Aldivera, and Attorney Rea M. Aguirre. From the interest groups, from the People Management Association of the Philippines, PIMA, Attorney Carmelo Aguilar, from the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, Mark Christian Villena. From the Buklura ng Magagawang Pilipino, Mr. Domingo Mole, the chairperson, together with Attorney Luke Espiritu, the national president. From the DMCI Project Developers Incorporated, Attorney Basilio D. Gascon Jr., Legal Council, Corporate Counsel, together with Mr. Miss Roby Concepcion, and Ms. Maven Rodrigo. And we also have Mr. Lilio Ribueno, together with his counsel, Attorney Reagan Capuno. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, uh, before we proceed, may we hear from our colleagues if uh, they want to deliver the opening statement. Senator Tulfo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Senator Jingo Estrada, my esteemed colleagues, uh, Senator Chis Scudero, members of labor sector, guests, good morning. I speak to you today to address a matter of grave concern. The often non-implementation and delayed enforcement of decisions in labor disputes. This is a serious injustice that has plagued our labor system for far too long, and it is time for us to take a decisive action to address it. The case of these workers is a glaring example of this problem. After years of struggle, these workers finally secured a landmark Supreme Court decision affirming their win. However, despite the finality of this decision, the opposing party has refused to comply, leaving these workers and their families in limbo. This is not an isolated incident. There are countless other cases of labor victories that have been rendered meaningless by the failure of management to comply with judicial decisions. Ika nila, marami dito ay nagiging 
paper victories lamang. This is a clear violation of the rights of workers, and it undermines the very foundation of our labor system. During the budget hearings, I have already raised this problem to the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, and the National Labor Relations Commission, or NLRC. Ang ating napagalaman na maraming pinagugatan ng problema na ito, isa na dito ang kakulangan ng sistema natin sa effective enforcement mechanism para sa mga desisyong na, pala, na panalunan na ng ating mga magagawa. Ito ay isa sa mga importanteng bagay na kailangan bigyan ng malaking pansin ng DOLE at NLRC. In addition to strengthening enforcement mechanism, we also need to address the underlying causes of this problem. This includes promoting a culture of respect for labor rights among employers, educating workers about their rights, and improving the efficiency of our labor justice system. The timely enforcement of decisions in labor disputes is not just a matter of fairness and justice. It is also a matter of economic necessity. When workers are denied what is rightfully theirs, it is not only harms their individual lives, but also weakens the Philippine economy as a whole. I urge my colleagues in the Senate to join me in taking action to address this critical issue. We must work together to ensure that the rights of workers are protected and that decisions, especially in labor disputes, are enforced in a timely and effective manner. Mr. Chair, kaya po tayo nandito at Ito mga nabanggit ko sa aking opening statement ay sapagkat meron pong ginawang injustice dito ang DMCI para sa mga manggagawang nanalo na ng kaso sa Supreme Court. Andito ba si Attorney Basilio Lazaro? No, Lazaro ang apelido mo. Bakit ka naging gas ko? Aso, sa mabilis lang. Pwede palitan mo, Lazaro, kasi yung patay kaya mo rabuhayin. And I'll explain to you bakit. Yung patay kaya nitong buhayin, Mr. Chair. Kaya nga dapat Lazaro ang apelido mo. I'll tell you why later. Go ahead. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Senator Cheese. Oh. I'm not the author, Mr. Chair, but um, just some clarifications before we begin, perhaps for the next hearing and for this hearing as well. You mentioned Attorney Gascon. Um, I saw the letter um, written by the Vice President of... Um, DMCI, um, Mr. Pasha, Attorney Gascon, tama? Pasha, your honor. Pasha? Pasha po, your honor. Pasha, he's the vice president? Yes, sir, honor. And he said you are the corporate secretary? No, your, no, your honor. I'm the corporate counsel, your honor. You're the corporate counsel? Yes, your honor. Um, and you said the chairman does not participate in day-to-day, -day, therefore cannot answer anyway, and he is out of the country. Would that be correct? Yes, Your Honor. But who is the president and CEO of the company? Mr. Alfredo Austria, Your Honor. So why not send, um, may I ask the, chair, the chairman of the committee to kindly invite the president and CEO? I guess he would know the day-to-day -day operations of the company. Would that be correct? Yes, Your Honor. My problem, Mr. Chairman, with um, Attorney Gascon is he does know a lot about this um, resolution filed by Senator Tulfo because, at, as he explained earlier, he took part in it in a major way. And um, I would rather hear from officials of the company if they are aware of these um, actions and actuations made by their um, corporate counsel. Um, so may I ask that in the next hearing we invite the president and CEO of the company in the person of Mr. Austria? Yes, Your Honor. In the person of Mr. Alfredo R. Austria. Okay, the chair instructs yes, the uh, ComSec to invite uh, the names mentioned by uh, Senator Jesus Codero. And one more point, Mr. Chair, for the next hearing again, um, for some administrative matters. May I know if the company you represent is a listed company, sir? Uh, Your Honor, the MCI Project Developer, Your Honor, is not a listed company, Your Honor. But the, subs the parent company, Your Honor, the MCI Holdings, Your Honor, is the listed company. And what is the relation between the two? Uh, One listed company, yung parent company, what regulations, if at all, would be would cover the um, your company that you're representing? Listed yung DMCI, di ba? 
Yes, Your Honor. So, what declarations or what, what regulations would cover your company? Uh, I, I guess, Your Honor, the corporation code, Your Honor. No, no, no. In relation to P2, the Philippine Stock Exchange, since it's a listed company. Yes, Your Honor. It's the one, uh, DMCI Holdings, Your Honor, the one who is uh, filing the the uh, annual or the general information sheet and the uh, reportorial requirements of the CEO, the, the SEC, Your Honor, and the PSE. And this company you're representing is wholly owned by DMCI? Yes, Your Honor. So it's part of the, what they're reporting to PSE? Yes, Your Honor. Would that be correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. May I ask also, Mr. Chairman, that we invite the PSE in the next hearing because some um, disclosures would be necessary in relation to these actions to the exchange as well. And one last point, Mr. Chairman, again, for some administrative matters. Um, may I ask if the subject property covered by the new TCT, TCT 12619, under the name of um, DMCI already, has been developed by DMCI? Uh, portion, Your Honor. Portion of the subject property developed, Your Honor? Yes, Your Honor. Despite, in spite the pendency of various cases that you yourself initiated? Uh, yes, Your Honor. May I ask also, Mr. Chairman, that we invite the HLURB or any appropriate housing agency as to how it came about that permits were granted to DMCI to begin construction and presumably selling units already when there is a, when the subject property is the subject matter of litigation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, the Chair instructs the Committee Secretary to invite all those uh, mentioned by uh, Senator Chis Codero. Uh, to our resource persons, anyone who wants to have an opening statement, we can accommodate. Yes, the Chairperson of the NLRC, Ms. Grace uh, Manikistan. Um, good Good morning po, Honorable Chair, Senator Jingoy Estrada, Vice Chair, Senator Rafi Tulfo, and Senator Francis Escudero. NLRC welcomes this opportunity to take part in these proceedings as we are confident that this will help us address some concerns of NLRC challenges that we encounter in enforcing our decisions. And we know that we need to work closely with the Senate to address these concerns, especially also for our for some legislative uh, issuances that may be necessary to help us in our problems. Maraming salamat po. Anybody else? Okay, uh, since uh, nobody wishes to have their opening statement, we can start now. Senator Tulfo? Yes. Uh, Attorney Lazaro, excuse me, Attorney Gascon, meron kang binuhay na patay. Why did you do that? Uh, before that, uh, Senator Tulfo, maybe you can have an oath. Yeah, put him under oath. Take their oath. Except the NLRC. Except the NLRC. And councils. Can we ask everyone to take except except NLRC and probably start from the NBN dollar? Dina. Dina. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, please, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth be before this committee investigation of the Committee on Labor and Employment? Please take your seat. Here. Senator Tulfo, you may now proceed. Attorney Gascon, politiki in tanong ko. Yung patay, kaya mong buhayin, although not literally, figuratively. Paano mo nagawa yun at bakit mo ginawa? Your Honor, I didn't do any or do anything that uh, rise, uh, resurrecting any dead, Your Honor. You did not? Yes, Your Honor. I have here a copy of the uh, release and quit claim. Um which was notarized by you, dated June 29, 2009. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ikaw na Yes, sir. Right. Do you have a copy? Get a copy. 
Maluwang pa yung kulungan pa dyan sa baba? Meron pa bang bakante? Wala. Uh, marami pa. Anong tawag niya? Pag kinukontem? Yes, I have your honor. I have a copy. Of you have? Lifiel ay marikit. Yan. Isa sa mga pumirma sa re release and quit claim na kung saan ninotarize mo. Yes, sir. Si Marikit ay patay na. Nung time na umirma siya rito. I have no knowledge, Your Honor, during the time that he was dead or he was already dead. You have no knowledge. Yes. Paano ka ba nag-notarize? Uh, process of nag-notarize? Of, of course, Your Honor, you have to to verify the inform uh, the 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 identities of the and how uh, how, how do you verify the identity by showing their IDs your honor no didn't they appear to you personally this two, you this two person your honor did not appear to me personally well then yun yung problema kasi pa yan ang pinaka number one requirement na pag merong isang tao nagpapanotarize sa iyo he or she should be present in front of you and verify his or her identification, compare that identification, pictures and all, doon sa kaharap mo. That's correct, Your Honor. And you did not do that? I I no, I put it in my notes, Your Honor, in my notarial book, Your Honor. No. Sabi mo kasi, wala ka knowledge at what, hindi siya sumipot. Sumipot ba siya o hindi? Hindi po siya sumipot, Your Honor. Then, bakit mo dinotarize na hindi pala siya sumipot? And pinakita lang sa iyo, dokumento, and all these people here, not only Marikit, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them did not appear before you. And you just, binigyan ka lang itong dokumento na pirmado na and then pumirma ka na lang. No, Your Honor. I, they personally appeared to me, Your Honor, except only the two, Your Honor. Uh, except. Did Selmar then dapat hindi mo tinuloy yung pag notarize Or binura mo siya. You shouldn't have included the names of the two, two persons who did not appear to you personally it's a pre forma your honor when it was given to me and then i Excuse just me? it's a pre forma your honor it's the the documents are already prepared when it was prepared uh, presented to me your honor then dapat binura mo o idinilit mo inalis mo yung dalawa na wala sa harap mo yun yung pinaka basic eh attorney I included it, Your Honor, in my notarial book, where in fact, it, it is dated 2009. I clearly state that non-appearance of, of Lidfield Maritan, uh, Maratan Maritan. Kaya, Attorney Lazaro, Attorney Gascon, very basic yan eh, pag notarize eh, di ba? Yung napapanotarize, kailangan, nandyan sa harap mo, at kompletos ng mga identification para i-compare mo yung ID na presenta sa iyo at yung picture doon tumutugma doon sa kaharap mo now kung wala doon yung dalawa hindi nag-appear sa iyo then dapat tinanggal mo tong pangalan ng dalawa Sabi ko kasi pwede ka ma-disbar dito Pwede ka ma-disbar and you know that Kaya tinawag kitang Lazaro kasi Ay mo buhayin yung patay. Patay na to, matagal na patay, binuhay mo. Kaya lang na matay to, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. With the permission of um, Senator Tulfo, um, I used please. to be a notary, um, Senator Tulfo. I ceased because the responsibility is huge and I didn't want to get in trouble. I may I ask directly, Attorney Gascon, regardless of what you put in your notes, nag-certify kay, pumirma ka, and I will read the, the acknowledgement. Before me, in this and that jurisdiction on this date, personally appeared the following. Diba? Who presented to me the following IDs and who acknowledged to me that this document consisting of X pages entitled blah is of their free and voluntary act indeed. But the, the initial, the, the beginning of any acknowledgement is always before me personally appeared um regardless of what you put in your notes um they did not personally appear they could not because they already passed as senator tulfo pointed out your honor uh there is an acknowledgement part of the agreement your honor where in fact uh, in that acknowledgement i clearly stated that 
uh, only all those who appear to me are present. Where in fact I put it in the in the in the last part that please see ID and all the IDs that only appeared to me are the one who attached in there, Your Honor. So that's why I I I maintain that these two person when they came to me because there are uh, so, so many of them, Your Honor. I think there are six of them, and the two of them. Uh, are not present and then I, I clearly put it in the last page that please see ID of only those person who appeared to me your honor um sang batas nakalagay an attorney so i'm not familiar i also took my oath as a notary um well, i'm not familiar unless me bagong pinasa ang korte suprema na exemption yon sa before me personally appeared that you can put in your notes that two did not and refer to their ids um may know the legal basis if any so that i may be educated as well I, I just base your honor on the uh, rules notarial practice that a uh, person who, who appears to you, uh, you, you could notarize it on the other persons who appear to your, your honor. The, those who acknowledge to you that they signed the documents, that is only my basis, your honor. So in good faith, your honor, when, when they appeared to me, uh, I, I clearly stated not only in the acknowledgement portion that this only the persons that appear to me, but uh, I also put it in my notarial book that these are all the persons that appear to me. And these two persons did not appear to me, Your Honor. So you're not attesting to the fact that they signed that document, those two persons? Yes, Your Honor. And yet, you as the corporate counsel facilitated the registration of that document so that a new TCT will be issued in favor of the company you're working for. Despite your personal knowledge, uh, that two of the six most likely did not sign voluntarily, willingly, or even were alive at that time. And yet, that document was used to register your ownership over the subject property. Paano nang, if, you're, if you admitted earlier na hindi nga sila kasama, yung dalawa sa anim hindi kasama, eh ba't yung ginamit yung dokumento yun para i-register yung interest at pagmamayari ng DMCA property holding thing? Yes sir, please. Uh, Your Honor, as I have said before, the, this document were not prepared by us. It, it's uh, it's a pre forma. Uh, when we during that time when it was asked us to 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 meet them, uh, the I think the the six person appeared, and then they they as far as them as far as we're concerned, and together with their counsel during that time, Your Honor, uh, they were assisted by the counsel, and then they signed the documents, Your Honor. And then that's the basis that we that they submitted to us, and that's the time, that's the use uh, that's the document that we that we use here on. Exactly, you notarized it with the absence of two persons. Apparently, one of them were, was already dead, and you used that same document in spite of the fact that you didn't see those two persons, and you noted in your notarial book na hindi sila nagapir. You still use that document to register your ownership. That would be a correct um, narration of fact, sir. Uh, in good faith, yes, Your Honor, we, we, we... I yield, Senator Tulfo. Attorney Gascon, dito sa acknowledgement uh, sa pagnonotarize mo, so umpisa pa lang sabi rito, before me, a notary public for and in the above jurisdiction, this June 29, 2009, tapos at Makati City, personally appeared personally appeared for the second time. Pero, sabi mo, hindi nag-appear. So, dito, nanumpa ka, nilagay mo pangalan mo, pumirma ka, sinasabi mo na personally appeared, and yet, hindi pala. So, dapat madisbar ka. Uh, Senator, again, uh, what I'm referring only is the two person, Your Honor, but the... Kaya nga, kaya nga, di ba? Dalawang hindi nag-appear. E dito, sinabi mo na personally appeared. Yan o, no? ikot-ikot tayo rito. Hindi tayo matatapos. Personally appeared. Lawyer ka, what does it mean? Ano yung sabi ng personal appeared? Itagalog mo. Uh, personal po silang humarap sa akin. Exactly. So personal na humarap ba yung dalawa? Lalo na itong si Marikit? Hindi. Dahil patay na eh. Yes, Your Honor. I acknowledge that uh, that fact, Your Honor. Na hindi siya umapir. Yeah, the two. Oh, bakit mo ninotarize? Eh, wala pala sa harap mo ito, si Marikit at yung isa pa. Sana hindi mo ninotarize. Sana, 
pinatanggal mo yung pangalan o pinaulit mo, sabi mo, baguhin nyo yan, tanggalin nyo yung dalawang wala rito. Next time, pag nagpresenta kayo ng dokumento, paharap nyo lahat with all the IDs. Again, Your Honor, in good faith during that time, uh, uh, I, uh, I, I just based on the notarial rule that uh, you could not notarize a document uh, to, to the extent of that person that you only uh, the, the, the first to the extent of the, the person who appeared to you, Your Honor. Sorry, Attorney. Ano ka tanga o nagtatanga tangahan? Then you know that na pwede ka madisbat because of this. You know that, right? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, dahil lang sa isang pirma o dalawang pirma, madidisbar ka, napakababaw na disbarment case yan. Because of two signatures, madidisbar ang isang attorney, Basilio D. Gascon Jr. And you know that. Right? Okay, and you keep saying, in good faith. Ando na tayo, maybe in good faith. Pero yung in good faith na reason na binibigay mo, it just shows na talagang meron kang ginawang clearing violation. Kahit na baliktad-baliktad rin natin. Sa kanong kadahilanan, alam mo na yon. You and me know. The reason. Diba? Right, Mr. Chair? Right, maybe you can hear first from the uh, complainants of the case. Are the counsels of uh, the complainants here? Yes. Attorney Kapuna. Good morning, po, Your Honor. You are Mr. Lepuena. Yes. You are uh, one, ako one mga... of the laborers concerned. Isa po ako sa mga kasama sa kaso ng uh, DMCI itong kaso ng ito. Uh, nangyari po ito noong uh, simula po kami ng kaso noong September 1996. Uh, hanggang ngayon po ay hindi namin na nakakamtan yung dapat namin uh, makamtan. Sapagkat marami pong balakid ang uh, nakapaloob dito. Unang-una po, ito pong uh, ito pong uh, release and quit claim. Tapos ito pong uh, job sale. Dahil po dito, Uh, kami po ay pinapirma ng aming uh, uh, katiwala sa... Mr. Sandali lang po. Si Attorney Kapuna, you are the counsel of the... I... Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Ilahad muna natin yung chronology of events kung pwede kasi para malaman na malaman na NRC, malaman ng mga uh, manunod natin. First, no 1996, Nelia Bernades et al. with co-complainants Lidfiel Marikit and Gerson Talam filed before the labor arbiter their respective complaint against Liberty Transport Corporation and its owner, spouses Honorata Laxina and Milagros Laxina for illegal dismissal, non-payment of wages, and other monetary claims. Tama? Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. And on April 27 of 1998, the labor arbiter rendered a decision in favor of of Bernadas et al. Correct? That is correct, Your Honor. On February 29 of 2000, on appeal, the NL NLRC affirmed the labor arbiter's decision. That is correct, Your Honor. On September 16 of the same year, according to Bernadas et al., Talam already ex set settled his claim with spouses Laxina by receiving 30,000 pesos and a bus. That is correct, Your Honor. And on March 15, 2006, Six years after a notice of levy was annotated on TCT 25491 stating that the corresponding share of Honorato Laxina in the subject property was levied. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. A year after, February 15, 2007, DMCI filed before the labor arbiter a third party claim with an attached affidavit of, the, of title over property claiming that it is the owner of the subject property. 
it alleged that the subject property then covered by TCT number 615 was sold by its previous owners, Honorato Laxina, Reynaldo Bonifacio Laxina, and Renato Junicio to Taguig Land Development Corporation way back on, on December 29, 1995 via deed of sale and that Taguig Land later merged with DMCI in 1997. That is correct, Your Honor. In October 18 of the same year, the labor arbiter denied the third-party claim of DMCI. That is correct, Your Honor. November 28 of the next year, 2008, the NRC affirmed the October 18, 2007 order of the labor arbiter. Correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Court of Appeals made the October 18, 2007 order of the labor arbiter final executory through its decision in, in CAGR number SP number 107334. And on March 4, 2009, the labor arbiter issued an order directing the sheriff to proceed with the execution to satisfy the judgment award rendered in the main labor case. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. On April 3, 2009, a month after, a public auction was conducted in which the subject property was sold to respondents through their attorney, in fact, Evelyn in Silaya Bueno. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. And several months after, Sheriff Dayo issued a certificate of sale which was inscribed on TNT, TCT number 254491. And in June 29, 2009, according to DMCI, Bernadas et al., including Mariquit and Talam, execute, exec, executed a deed and or certificate of redemption of real property and, and a release and quit claim in favor of DMCI. That is correct, Your Honor. And on June 30, 2009, the purported 1995 deed of sale executed in favor of Tagiglad was annotated on TCT number 25491. A petition was also filed before the Register of Deeds for the cancellation of the Certificate of Sale annotated on TCT number 25491. And a month after, an entry, an entry cancellation of the Certificate of Sale was annotated on, two, on TCT number 25491. As a consequence of these incidents, TCT number 1269 was issued in the name of Tagigland and TCT number 2549 was cancelled. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You may now proceed. Your Honor, from there, uh, I, I understand the, uh, those facts mentioned by the Honorable Chairman are the undisputed facts found by the Supreme Court already in a decided case before uh, them. In two instances, uh, Your Honor, the Supreme Court has declared that the basis of rights of uh, DMCI over the subject property cannot be considered or declared as uh, null and void. First, Your Honor, in, in, in the sale that you mentioned in 1995, where uh, DMCI alleged that they bought the subject property from the original uh, owners of the property, uh, the Supreme Court said that uh, this cannot be given any weight uh, and instead the sale should be nullified because it is, in the words of the Supreme Court, it is beyond human experience that DMCI will not register its rights on the property for more than 11 years already, Your Honor. Uh, also, it, is, it was noted by the Supreme Court in the decision that uh, since this first uh, argument used by the company, uh, was not accepted by the Supreme Court. In their words, Your Honor, the, the DMCI undertook, the, as, as what they said, a, a underhanded method, uh, Your Honor. And this underhanded method is the use of the, uh, the deed of uh, uh, the release and quit claim, which was a subject of the inquiry of the Senate, uh, Senator Tulfo earlier, where uh, a person who is already died in 1997 uh, uh, a signature appeared in this deed and was notarized in year 2009, Your Honor. So the Supreme Court did not even accept this as a good reason for the basis of the interest of uh, DMCI over the subject property, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, attorney, excuse me, Attorney Gascon, nung pinirmahan mo yung uh, quit claim, yung notario, yung... meron bang ID pinakita siya ito marikit? Wala po, Your Honor. Hmm. Sa akin may ID na pinakita sa'yo? Honor and Talam? Yes. No, they, they didn't 
show to me any idea on it. That's, that's the reason why I put in the the in the notarial uh, in the back of the of the notarial register, Your Honor, that uh, please see I So they never showed up physically. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, sure. Patay niya siya. Paano nung papakita yun? Unless binuhay mo. So what? Katulad yung tinanong ni Senator Tulfo, why did you still sign that uh, notary na hindi sumipot yung dalawa? You should have deleted it from your, ano, from the list. Uh, Your Honor, I, I have said in good faith, uh, I, I just based on the notarial rules that uh, a, not, a notary public can notarize a document. Kasi may pirma pa, may pirma pa yung marikit tsaka yung talam eh. May pirma pa eh. How did you know that these were genuine signatures? They, they're not the one who, who signed it, Your Honor. During Who's the one who signed it? Your Honor, can, can I explain? Yeah, yeah. During that time, Your Honor, it's way back in 2008. As far as I can remember, the one who, I think the one who signed that is one of their correspondent. And then I... I, I Did have, you allow yourself to sign your notary na alam mo na hindi, hindi yung taong pumirma? Iba I, pumirma during pangalan? that time, Your Honor, I really object to that. But since... Oh, why did you sign if you objected to it? Why did you sign it if you objected to it? Right away. Your Honor, I, I again I have said that in I only uh, I only what you, what you said I only uh, allowed that. that, that you did it in good those. faith. How did you do it in good faith when in fact you knew you, you knew earlier that that was not the signature of Marikit and you knew ikaw lang nagsabi ngayon na iba ang pumirma doon. Yes, Your Honor, because Your Honor during that time. Uh, during the time, as, as I, I have remembered, uh, together with their counsel, they said that these two persons are, are not already important to the case. And during that time, they are already in rush of uh, what you call this in, in, in settling the case. And then that's why, Your Honor, in good faith, I, 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 only, I, I only acknowledge all those persons who personally appeared to me, Your Honor. And that is Nelia Bernadas. Lilio Rebueno and all the other co-defendants you're on. You know what? I do not want to berate you any further. No? You just mentioned earlier that these were not the signatures of the of these two persons. Itong si Marikit, itong si Marikit, tsaka itong si Talam. Abogado ka, Tony Gascon. Dapat tinanggal mo na. If these two are irrelevant to the cases, you should have deleted it. Oh, irrelevant na pala yan. Bali, wala, kung mga irrelevant, wala nang bilang. Di ba? Tama? Dapat, dapat tinanggal mo na. Mr. Tulfa, your relationship. Your, your yeah, quickly lang, uh, Mr. Chair. Alam mo na wala siya doon. Acknowledge mo, yun yung isang pagkakamali mo, dinugtungan mo pa na isang pagkakamali, alam mo na yung signature dyan ay hindi siya ang pumirma, meaning si Marikit. You acknowledge na it is not her signature and somebody forged her signature and you allow that to happen by affirming your signature here. Dito sa quick claim na ito, dalawa ang pagkakamali mo, and you're still gonna use that word, I do it in good faith. That reason will not be accepted by the Supreme Court if a case of disbarment will be found against you. Ah, magikero ka, kaya sabi kanina, pabiro na dapat ang pilido mo, Lazaro. Yung patay, nabubuhay sa'yo. Now you, now you acknowledge na talagang sobrang Malaking pagkakamaling ginawa mo. And why, why was that? And anong dahilan? Ba't mo pinayagan mangyari ito? Maybe you have a reason to do it. Huwag mo nang gamitin salitang in good faith. Why did you let it happen? Attorney Gascon, sir. You must have a reason. Maybe yung reason mo hindi namin kayang abutin at ikaw lang nakakabot. But try us. Ano reason? Alis mo yung good faith, ha? Your Honor, during that time, uh, as I have remembered, uh, these workers are already asking the company to be to be settled. Uh, they're asking already to be paid. 
and they're also asking that the, uh, should the case be already uh, be settled with the workers, Your Honor. So when the counsel of the of the uh, of the counsel of the complainant, Your Honor, uh, I would like to remind Your Honor that the MCI is not a party to the labor case. Uh, we were just uh, included in that. Kumbaga, Your Honor, na damay lang ho yung DMCI because uh, yun nga po, as, as, as mentioned earlier, that uh, during that time, it is the one who is the laxina who has the, the labor case with the workers. And then I think the case during that time was already dragging uh, for too long with, with the laxina. And then the council during that time uh, personally appeared to the management asking that, imploring that they could be paid already. So... Uh, in good faith, your, uh, sorry, uh, as, as the management, uh, of course, the management during that time is hesitant to pay because, as, as we have said, this is, these are not the workers of the MCI, Your Honor. But in order to, 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 to settle everything and to, to have the peaceful uh, uh, of the company, they decided to, to, to agree, Your Honor, to the, during that time that they should be that to, to, to pay them, Your Honor. Yung sinasabi mo, walang kailangan ng DMCI, but DMCI bought the property of the uh, employer that has a labor case. Uh, during that time, Your Honor, uh, the, 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 the DMCI because binili ng DMCI yung property. I, uh, At ngayon, pinatayo ng subdivision. Uh, own, the, na, the property, Your Honor, the land is owned by the three brothers, uh, the three siblings, Your Honor, Honorato Laxina, uh, the other two, Your Honor. Between the three brothers, Your Honor, the three siblings, only Honorato Laxina has a labor case with because he has a he owned the Liberty Transport, Your Honor. But during that time, Your Honor, 1995, uh, DMCI, I, I am not yet connected with the DMCI during uh, DMC has no knowledge that the Laxina, Your Honor, one of the one of the seller has a labor case, Your Honor. It is only during the time what that the property was levied, only the time that the MCI have the knowledge that Laxina has a, a, a labor case, Your Honor. Kaya nga, so na-levied na yung, yung property, eh bakit niya tinuloy pa rin pagpapatayin ng condominium? Uh, during that time, Your Honor, there is, uh, we haven't... Uh, uh, during that time, Your Honor, uh, the MCI has not... Uh, developed the property during that time. It's that 2008. It is only recently that 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 the uh, that the condominium was built on the portion of the property. Because your honor, during that time, uh, we maintain that the MC uh, we maintain that the MC maintained that only the portion of the property uh, owned uh, is uh, involved in the litigation, Your Honor. It, uh, it's uh, 1.6 hectare, Your Honor. And we maintain, the MSA maintain, that since the three brothers, only the, the Laxina has uh, a labor case uh, against these workers. So the two, two, two other siblings, Your Honor, are, are free from, from, from this case, Your Honor. Okay, I think I need Attorney Reagan Capino Kapuna, sorry. Uh, I need to get a, your reaction to what he said. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. With respect to that development, Your Honor, uh, we opine that, uh, as, as mentioned by counsel, their development of condominium in the said area is only just recently, but they are aware of the ongoing case already long before the development. So we believe, Your Honor, that uh, at the time they develop or made a master plan of the development in that area, they're already aware of this ongoing case involving the land. On the issue that only a portion of the 1.6 hectare land belongs to the uh, complainant, uh, the, 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 the fact, Your Honor, is that there is no subdivision yet on the one point. If, if that is the position of, uh, of a DMCI, there is no subdivision yet of that property so we don't know which portion belongs to the, the the laborers or to the other one but in the proceedings before the labor arbiter the national labor relations commission the court of appeals and in the decided case by the supreme court uh, third division uh the, the subject property has always been treated as one as as a whole uh property uh your honor Mr. Attorney uh, Your Honor, uh, it is 
during that time uh, uh, when we developed the property in good uh, again your honor we, we 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 specifically included in our report that there is a pending litigation over this property at the same time your honor uh, that's why this case has dragged for so long because uh, during that time there are a lot of different parties who is claiming over property in the rights of the DMCI, Your Honor. That's why uh, we filed a case in Supreme Court because we maintain that only one third of the property is uh, uh, allotted for the workers. Where in fact, Your Honor, in the recent Supreme Court decision, where is the main case, the Supreme Court upheld our contention that indeed that the workers only are entitled to the one third of the property. And it is pending, Your Honor, in Supreme Court and we filed an MRI on. Is that Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, um, Chief. just to interject, um, as a lawyer, even assuming what you're saying is true, na yung isang kapatid lang, yung may adverse judgment na dapat bayaran yung mga manggagawa, may dalawa pang kapatid na may ari ng lupa, at best, you have a two-thirds inchoate share. And I'm sure you know the definition of what inchoate means. Sure. Which means? It's that it's un still undivided. There May party ka, pero hindi mo pwedeng ituro kung alin mismo yung party mo. Yes, Your Honor. That's why I wanted to invite HLURB, Mr. Chairman, because if they're already developing and constructing it without that issue being settled, anong karapatan na lang mag para sa sarili nila na ituro? Sige, dito na kami. Yung one-third nyo, kung one-third man nga yan, na. Second point, Mr. Chairman. Assuming that your theory is that the workers, right, the workers are only entitled to one third of um, of um, the total property, dal isa lang yung may utang. E ang pinangbayad para masettle, correct me if I'm wrong later on by the NLRC. Ang pinangbayad para masettle yung kulang kulang dalawang million utang na judgment na NLRC was the entire parcel of land. Number two. Ni hindi nila ni redeem after the period of redemption, which they could have done, either by any of the brothers, for that matter. Because remember, this was not a deed of sale executed by the three brothers or by one brother without the knowledge of the two other siblings. This was by virtue of a judgment by the NLRC. Yes, sir, please. Kindly. Uh, your, your Honor, uh... In, in the proceedings of the NLRC, if you were going to 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 to, to review, uh, I think the NLRC uh, 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 levied uh, the the award is only portion of the property, but the sheriff levied the whole property. On it. there is a notice in the sheriff sale. If you will notice in the notice of sheriff sale, that they only. Uh, levy, uh, they only the subject of the sale is only two thirds, but the sheriff during that time, Your Honor, they levied the whole property, Your Honor. Sino may ari no, at that time? Silak sina pa? Uh, it was already sold, Your Honor, in 1995. However, it, the, the title was not transferred because during that time, Your Honor, uh, I think like Laksina, the, the sale uh, has a pen, what you call this, they paid the the uh, they didn't pay the whole estate tax, Your Honor. So that's why they're being uh, assessed of deficiency tax of the estate tax. So because of that, Your Honor, we, uh, the sale cannot secure a, a certificate of registration for the sale, Your Honor, because the BIR is asking that the estate tax should be settled first, Your Honor. The subject matter of both TCTs under question is one parcel of land. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, Your Honor. If you yourself are admitting that you only have two-thirds, and if at all the subject matter of the case um, only involves one-third, eh di, bakit kayo nagkaroon ng titulo at, pina, at binili nyo yung kabuoang lupa? No, Your Honor. Hindi nyo nung mga usap, no, mga labor. Uh, your, yeah, no, Your Honor. The, the sale was, uh, 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 what do you call this? The sale was... Uh, completed your honor 1995 between you and the spa and, and the laxinas yes you are for 1.6 your honor and the, the the seller of that land your honor are three the, uh, they they were included that the the registered owner in the land your honor are, are three 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 person your honor. exactly my point they sold the land to you in spite and despite the fact that it was already the subject matter of levy and execution by virtue of a decision of the NLRC. No, Your, Your Honor. 
uh, during that time, Your Honor, there is still no uh, notice and levy. It was only in 1995, I guess, Your Honor, uh, the levy was only, I, I forgot the date, Your Honor. So, 2006. When was the levy, Attorney Gabonok? 2006 or 2007, Your Honor. Sure, Your Honor, but only recent, uh, 1995 was the date of the sale, and only 2006 or 2007, Your Honor, uh, when the levy was uh, annotated in the TCT, Your Honor. It was on March 15, 2006. A notice of levy was annotated on TCT number 25491, stating that the corresponding share of Honorato Loxina in the subject property was levied. For the yes, Your Honor, that is correct. And then, please proceed. And then, Your Honor, after that, uh, we are not, of course, we are not aware that there is a, a labor case uh, levied, uh, held against the Honorato Loxina, Your Honor. So it was only in 2007 or 2008, Your Honor, that we discovered that there is a levy. And during that time, uh, because of that, uh, I think one of the council of the, during the council of the complainant during that time, already, uh, what you call this, uh, uh, conveyed their interest to, to, to settle. And during that time, Your Honor, we, we, we maintain that we are not, party to this case it should be the the laxina should settle the 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 award to the to the what you call this to the to the workers but again your honor since they requested that they want to 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 to, to be paid already and enjoy their the the their victory in the labor case and in addition to the all the back we, on all the previous award that they that they were received your honor only the one point only the this, uh, this amount was already uh, not been given to them. What, one last point, Mr. Chair. Um, um, I didn't practice labor, I will admit that. I was a litigator, but not in the NLRC. May procedure buffer for attachments to NLRC during the pendency of a case? Uh, magandang umago po, Mr. Meron po ba? Meron po. In this case, this property was not attached during the pendency of the case. Pendente ah, Wala pong ganun. Pag nagkaroon lang po ng uh, finality, saka pa lang po maaaring magkaroon ng uh, uh, execution. On execution yun, but attachment, pendente delete. Wala pong attachment sa NLRC. No, walang ginawa dito o wala kang, walang poder ang NLRC to attach? Wala po kaming power mag-attach. That, that is perhaps, Mr. Chairman, one avenue for remedial legislation because that remedy meaning for an attachment pendent delete is available in regular courts, but not before the NLRC. Meaning to say, habang pending yung kaso, para mabayaran ka, i-attach mo at i-annotate sa likod ng titulo yung pendency of the case so that buyers such as the MCI would be put on notice that there is such a pending case and that they should be aware and beware that the outcome of the case um, is not yet, has not yet been settled. Thank you, sir. That would be all. Mr. Mr. Chair, kung maaari pa pong magdagdag, um, magandang umaga po muli uh, sa inyo at sa lahat ng mga nandito ngayon. Um, siguro po sa kasong ito, nakikita, in, uh, number one po, hindi po namin alam na mayroon pong uh, particular na kaso. Are you familiar with the case? Medyo ngayon lang po namin na nababasa na po. Wala pa kayo sa NLRC na nung... Wala pa, wala, pa. wala pa po. Anyway po, yung tungkol po rin sa concern po rin sa uh, ito po ay isang prueba kung gaano po kahirap ang execution sa NLRC. Kung mapapansin po natin dito sa kaso pong ito, nagsimula ang kaso ng 1995, natapos po siya ng 2000. Pero po, uh, siguro po ah, in, in the meantime, wala pong makitang ari-arian ng may-ari na, ng respondent uh, sila laksina po rito. Kaya po kinailangan ng sheriff namin na ang gawin ay ipalevy yung property nung respondent. So nangyari lamang po yung levy six years after na po nung 2000 na decision, which is 2006 na po. Pagdating pa po ng 2006, kagaya po sa mga nangyari sa kasong ito, mayroon pong biglang mga dumarating na third party claimant uh, na nagsasabi na hindi na yung kung sino ang nasa titulo ang may-ari, kung, kung hindi po ibang tao na ang may-ari. 
So kagaya po nito, ito po ang isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit po napakahirap po na marip nung ating mga manggagawa na nanalo na sa amin yung kanilang uh, napanalunan sa kaso. Uh, makikita rin po natin sa kaso na ito na yun pong uh, register of deeds kahit po na uh, nagkaroon na po ng auction sale ang NLRC at pinaannotate na po sa titulo yung auction sale ng NLRC Uh, kung tama po yung naalala ko sa kaso based po sa discussion, para pong dinisregard ng register of deeds yung auction sale ng NLRC and instead, transfer pa po yung title ng diretso sa, sa uh, Tagigland ba or sa DMCI? So, sa Tagigland, kahit po uh, ang finding na po na, ng uh, aming arbiter sa NLRC is that uh, bakit uh, 1995 pa nabili, e eh, samantalang hindi pa rin po pinatransfer ang titulo. So, dinisregard niya po yung third-party claim ng DMCI at ng Tagigland. Pero just the same po, hindi po uh, in honor ng uh, Register of Deeds yung uh, ginawang annotation, yung ginawang auction sale ng NLRC ng aming sheriff dun sa titulo. At instead ay hindi pa rin po ibinigay sa mga tao yung uh, lupa. Uh, so, siguro po isa rin po ito sa maaaring uh, matulungan ang aming ahensya para sa aming for execution purposes na uh, yun pong uh, yun pong register of deeds eh kung po pwedeng maitask na ituring kami na parang isang regular na uh, korte at hindi lamang po na isang maliit na quasi judicial agency at questionin pa ang aming uh, power ang power ng aming mga sheriff na mag-execute at yung mga ari-arian ng mga respondents ay maaari naming hilahin Thank you for your valuable uh, insights and we will take that into consideration and uh, maybe in the near future we will uh, craft a law maybe with the assistance of uh, the members of the NLRC. Maybe sa so next series, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, invite natin yung Register of Deeds. Next series? Yes. Okay. So next series. Pomsek, please take note that uh, Senator, Senator Tulf was requested to invite the Register of Deeds of Uh, yung sinasabi kanina of Tagig of Tagig of Tagig, of tagig. No? pwede po siguro po pati po yung sa LRA mismo LRA mismo LRA siguro po All right. suggestion lang take note of it you want something do you have something to say attorney Gascon were you raising your hand a while ago before I acknowledge the commissioner Nick Dao no you are uh, alright uh, maybe we will uh, si Mr. Lilio hindi natapos yung iyong... Uh, ayan, Lord, magandang para po sa atin lahat. Uh, ako po yung nagpapasalamat na ang kasong ito ay nadala dito sa Senado. Sapagkat ito pong kasong ito ay nagsimula pa noong 1996, September. Na hanggang ngayon ay wala pa kaming Uh, kasiguro dahan na makamit namin yung aming minimiti. Sana naman po uh, magkaroon na uh, pagbabago sa mga implementasyon ng matas natin pagkat kami pong mga manggagawa ay dihadong dihado sa ngala ng ustisya sapagkat mahigit na uh, 26 years na po ito, na kasong ito. Hindi po namin malaman kung ano ba talaga ang mangyayari sa amin sapagkat simula-simula pa man sa labor, NLRC, sa LRA, hanggang Court of Appeals, hanggang Supreme Court, lahat po ay naipanalo namin. Pero nung kami po ay inaano namin sa Register of Deeds, kung na-implement yung uh, decision favor sa amin, tinanggihan po kami. Wala po kaming napala na di namin maintindihan kung saan ba kami pupunta. Ano bang batas ang pwede nating may ano dito? Ma para magkaroon ng ipin yung uh, ano ng labor. Decision ng labor. Mr. Chair, tapos na ba ang budget hearing para sa registered deeds? Sarap gisain ito eh. 
na ba? Ngayon, alam mo. It's under the DOJ. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Um, meron ng entry of judgment dito, uh, dated April 4, 2022. Ito yung sinasabi ni uh, Mr. Rebueno. Final and executory. January 16, 2023 from the third division of the Supreme Court na kung saan dininay yung instant petition ng DMCI at inaffirm yung prior decision ng Court of Suprema and yet, hindi natuloy. Anong nangyari dito? Attorney Gascon? Uh, Your, Your Honor, uh, I think there are three uh, pen, uh, there are three cases involving this uh, uh, issues, Your Honor. First is the main case, which is still pending with, with the Supreme Court, uh, wherein the Supreme Court, in this case, Your Honor, uh, the Supreme Court said and uh, finally affirmed the stand of the MCI that the workers are only entitled for the uh, one third of the property. Then second, Your Honor, the one that you are referring is the another case that is the case involving the end consulta of filed by Miss Evelyn Insalay Rebueno, Your Honor, who is Insalay Rebueno, Re bueno, Your Honor. Uh, she is the one who alleges that the workers sold their rights to Insalay Evelyn Rebueno by virtue of a deed of sale. And Insalay Evelyn Rebueno is also the one claiming rights and pro uh, ownership over the property because according to her uh, the workers already sold their rights over to to, to her and this this insular revenue your owner filed uh, uh, in register of deeds for the registration of the order but unfortunately the register of deeds during that time denied her denied her petition and then uh, the register of deeds elevated the case to in consulta to lra uh, that's the one that that's the the subject of that case, Your Honor. And another case, Your Honor, is the the what you call that the MCA filed the quieting of title because uh, again from the very beginning we are maintaining that the workers are only entitled to one third. But this case, Your Honor, I guess uh, since it will be already uh, the 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 first decision already, Your Honor, the Supreme Court already affirmed the 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 petition that. The, that the workers are already uh, entitled to one third. So I guess, Your Honor, the quieting of title will be immaterial because the Supreme Court right now have already decided that and upheld the 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 fact that the property only belongs to the one third of the property, Your Honor. Attorney Capuno. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. I wish to comment on that statement, Your Honor, that it has. Uh, as far as my memory will serve me right and the records of this case uh, or cases uh, will confirm. Uh, it was never raised in any proceeding below or lower the Supreme Court regarding the one-third uh, right of the laborers, Your Honor. The issue has always been the entire property, Your Honor. Uh, if my memory serves me right, the MCI never raised that in any of their uh, filings, in any of the cases filed before the arbiter, the NLRC, the, the Court of Appeals. And it was only uh, until the Supreme Court first division decision that the one-third issue came up, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, Senator G, um, I saw in the chronology of facts that the NLRC decision, there was an entry of judgment with respect to the NLRC decision in regard to the nullification of TCT 12619 in favor of TCT number 25491. Um, but nakadalawang entry of judgment, sir? Oh, ma'am? And by my understanding is pag may entry of judgment, final na, but in appeal pa sa Court of Appeals. But in appeal, but nag-MR pa, tapos nag-entry of judgment ulit. Can you explain that, ma'am? Um, I think po, um, yun pong us may yung pong unang entry of judgment was issued while may MR na pending may meron hong oversight na nangyari doon ni po nung kabilang party na 
Meron pa po kami motion for reconsideration na pending pa po yun. So, i-resolve nyo muna po bago kayo magkaroon ng entry of judgment. Okay. So, ni-resolve po yung MR in the process of resolving. They have to lift the entry kasi medyo premature ang pagkakaroon ng entry of judgment and then dininay and then, po yung MR. And then a new entry of judgment was, was entered on May 16, Apo, 2012. Yun po yun. yun, po yun. Paano, paano inakit sa Supreme Court yan? Eh, may entry of judgment eh. Um, Ang amin po kasi mga decisions, kahit may entry of judgment, pwede yung isubject ng petition for review sa Court of Appeals at umaakit po yan sa Supreme Court. Um, under Rule 65 po yung petition for certiorari. So although, yes po. So although uh, may petition po na umaandar, nag execute po kami sa ibaba. Unless a TRO is issued by the Court of Appeals. So without a TRO pending appeal, um, you can execute yes, po. judgment? Yes po, sir. Yes po. This is Mika. Your okay. Honor, uh, with regard to the entry, I think the with 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 regard with this case, Your Honor, there are the, the entry of judgment that are referring is the the main decision that the the labor arbit the the, the, the labor already decided that they are really entitled for award, right? Uh, the the RC. That's the fine. That's the uh, entry of judgment, Your Honor. But with the main case, there is still uh, the one that the order of the the what you call this the the nlrc ordering the, the title that is the one that is still pending your uh, uh, as far as i remember your own marami ko marami pala violations of dmci according to the supreme court are you aware of it i'm not aware yet. um in the decision in the decision, the decision of the third division I'm sure you're aware of it. Yeah, yeah, we, we are aware, Your Honor, but we, we filed an MR to that, Your Honor. The DMCI is accused of forum, sh forum shopping. Are you aware of it? Yes, Your Honor, it was in the decision. Given the foregoing settled doctrines, the court rules that DMCI is guilty of committing forum shopping when it filed a complaint for quieting of title with the RTC, and a petition for certiorari before the CA, decision of which is appealed in the present position, uh, in the present petition. But can a forum shop? Baka makachamba. Hmm? Dalawa, dalawa, dalawa. Your Honor, we, we just only your Honor uh, exhausting. Because during that time, your Honor, uh, again, we are we are willing during that time to settle. But unfortunately, during that time, there are lots of parties who is coming coming to the MCI. There is one group who is saying that they are already the owner, and there is another group who are saying that they are owner, and then there is another group that that that, that uh, uh, saying that they're owner. Well, in fact, your owner, uh, we are already we are always accommodating them. They always going to the office asking them for for us to to pay them. But we want. We are explaining to them, uh, if we will going to settle uh, one of you, all parties should appear to us and have an agreement that after this, after we settle, no, no more, no more claim will be again uh, raised against the MCI. But again, Your Honor, the, the workers and also the other groups are not agreeing to each other. So, so we are at loss, Your Honor. Who, 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 who sino yung kakausapin ng DMCI? So that's why. Uh, Your Honor, actually, uh, uh, they keep on and uh, what you got changing the lawyers, and then another thing, they will come again to us, and then they saying, "Hey, I am the I'm the owner of the property. I'm and the, the, there are different pack, different parties already. So that's why the MCI, in fairness to us, we we want to settle them, but unfortunately, and dami ho nila. At ang dami ho nila, ang sabi ho nung isa siya na may-ari, ang sabi ho nung isa siya na rin ho yung may-ari. Kaya na, na ano po kami, na sabi namin kung kung, sa, kung magsisettle tayo, we have to we have to go to to have to make one stand and go to the labor arbiter, we settle everything so that we determine who will be the to to settle all uh, to settle once and for all this case. Mr. Chairman, just a clarification because I'm getting confused now. The deed of redemption Correct me if I'm wrong. That you notarized. Covers the entire property. 
Not just two-thirds, ah. The entire property. Yes, Your Honor. I'm confused now. From day one, you said, yung may litigation is only one-third. Sinabi mo kanina, in Kuwait. But when you applied, when you when you did the deed of redemption, it covers the entire property that the TCT you were able to secure covers the entire property as well, which the Supreme Court struck down, ah. Yun, final na yun. Wala nang issue doon, di ba? Correct me if I'm wrong. That's not the first division case. That's the third division case. Is that correct? Ang pinag-aawayan nyo sa first division case, yung pag-nullify ng title nyo ng NLRC, ng labor arbiter ng NLRC. Yun yung nasa first division. Is that correct? But your claim itself covers the entire property because if really you're interested only with the two-thirds and you want the laborers to be paid and you're not that nice and magnanimous, then why not sue for partition? Uh, you so know, the incubate share of the laborers can be rightfully given to them. Yeah. Yeah, I acknowledge that. Did you ever do that? Uh, Your Honor, during that time, uh, again, the, the, the workers during the time are claiming the whole property, which which the MCI uh, uh, really uh, what you call this objected. We said that we are we uh, we we are that the property that the that the portion only of the property should 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 be. Uh, given to the workers. But, Your Honor, during that time, they still maintaining, even the other parties maintaining that they want to get the whole property. Fine, fine. Sila yun. So, purgi tinahang kinila yung buang, kinin yun yung buang. Because again, uh, your position that they own one-third and you only bought two-thirds from the Lasinas was not in the early pleadings, ha? Huh? It was not there. That's an afterthought. Siguro napikon na kayo, nainis na kayo sa mga workers kasi ang kulit, kinaklaim yung buo, one-third lang naman dapat yung kanila, eh dahil kami na rin. Meaning, tao lang, napipikon po, di ba? So, right? But you're claiming the entire property now. During that time, Your Honor, yes, we're claiming because yes. it, 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 it is uh, as far... Just, just a yes yeah. or no, you were claiming the entire property from day one up to today. Uh, Your Honor, the 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 portion of the property that not the one third already, Your Honor, uh, we are claiming now because we have already set we have already, Your Honor, settled with with. But the, even before settlement, even before settlement, you were claiming the entire property. Yes, Your Honor, because. Uh, so meaning, so what was being one third lagi na Because if you really wanted only, and if you really understood that you bought only the share of the two siblings and not the one with the case, then you could have sued for partition. And you could have gotten your two-thirds. Hindi. You also wanted the whole property. And I'm not business is business. You want to earn a profit. But don't wash your hands of um, we want to help the worker. Hindi. Because if you really wanted to, you could have sued for partition, gotten your two-thirds, and given the workers ano. Um, now, may I ask, how much did you buy the property for? How much the, was the value of the property in 2006? Whole property, as since the subject property was never divided into three anyway. Uh, I have no... Uh, in the deed of sale, Your Honor, in 1995, uh, we, the, the MCA only bought the property at around... Uh, I, I, I am not... Uh, I, I, I don't remember, Your Honor. Give me a ballpark figure. I'm sure that's why you were sent here to answer all of our questions in the absence of your chairman and president. Magkano yung binali yung property ng Galasinas? The whole property, ah? 30 million, Your Honor. 30 million in 19... 1995, Your Honor. Um, when was the decision issued? Twenty twenty three. The NLRC decision, po. Yes. Oh yeah. I think, the award. I, I think two thousand, po. Apos two thousand six, po na. Yung levy. Apo. Yung levy, right? Two thousand six, po yung levy. Pero two thousand, po yata nang karon ng entry of judgment na sign. Um, may we see, may we see the deed of? Uh, can you submit to the committee a copy of the deed of sale? Because in the Supreme Court decision, Mr. Chairman Senator Dulfo, they said it was um not in accordance with human experience that a corporation, a real estate company at that, would fail to register for over a decade a deed of sale covering a huge tract of land. Um, and that decision has since already become final. Would that be correct? 
Yung ba yung first division o third division? Third division yun, ko naman. Tapos na yun eh. Yeah, no, the, the, the one that is filed on MR is the one that, that says that why the MCI in the, uh, uh, how many, for how many years didn't uh, uh, register the same. Again, Your Honor, uh, the reason why we didn't uh, registered it because, Your Honor, during that time, uh, again, the Laxinas, the, the seller, are being assessed of the estate tax, deficiency estate tax. And because the Laxina, during that time, it is their responsibility to, to what you call this, to, 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 to process this, uh, to, to, sec to secure the estate tax clearance. But unfortunately, uh, in those long period of time, they didn't, uh, they didn't secure this clearance, Your Honor. Sir, that is standard practice too. You could have rescinded the sale if it took them 10 years to pay the estate taxes. Or number two, you could have simply subtracted it from the purchase price and you paid it yourself to make sure, as it is usually done. Diba yung capital gains, yung buyer na minsan na nagbabayad para siguradong makakuha kayo ng car sa BIR, minamainus na lang sa purchase price. In this case, I find it incredible too that DMCI would wait for 10 years longer than that because of an estate tax issue, and you could have simply deducted the estate tax from the purchase price that you would be paying to the siblings. Your Honor, during that time, we have already paid. There is nothing more to deduct from the lux from the seller because they are no, already point, That could have been taken into account at that time because you knew of that already. Ba? Anyway, that's your business judgment. You, you still have something to say, Attorney uh, Capuno, or...? Done from our end, Your Honor. No more? Uh, all right. Uh, we will continue uh, hearing this uh, issue next by next week, uh, November, uh, December, uh, November 29, same time at 10 o'clock. And I would like to take note, uh, I would like to, again, to reiterate uh, to the committee secretary the invitation that should, uh, that uh, said, that Senator Escudero has mentioned. May I know who they are again? LRA? Yung, yung CEO ng uh, DMCI? President CEO. President and CEO ng uh, DMCI? Okay. HLURB? Who else? PSE. Okay, PSC. Uh, Philippine, uh, PSE, Philippine Stock Exchange. Can you please tell your president and CEO of the MCI to be to be available on that date? Yes, sir. Or else we will issue a subpoena. All right. Yep. Okay. Hearing is hereby uh, suspended. Thank you. Until uh, November twenty-nine at ten o'clock in the morning. Suspended. Yeah.